The sun is shining more on this part of the world, and it always amazes me how quickly the land begins to change when it does. The trees are full of leaves again, and everywhere the sun has kissed the earth is blanketed in luscious emerald green. It's as though I have stepped foot into a fairy tale. So much light, so much life, and so much love. The past few weeks have been busy on the homestead, getting the goats and chickens ready for a new season. And there's always so much to do to get the gardens ready for spring. Preparing the soil, planting the seeds, and nurturing new life as it rises from the earth. And even though there's so much work to do, just being out here in nature brings new life to me too. Earlier this spring, we built a new chicken coop and grew our flock. The old coop was small and hard to clean. It took a while to get the hens used to their new digs, but they're finally beginning to feel at home. And to make our lives easier, we installed a new automatic door that opens and closes when the sun rises and sets. We also dewormed our goats, trimmed their hooves, and prepared them for the change of season. As the temperatures rise, so do all things from the underworld, such as pests. In the spring, as the story goes, Persephone returns above ground, pushing up from deep within the earth new life. Not only plants, but all living things, even worms, slugs, mites, and parasites. So I like to keep the goats protected by lathering their legs with neem oil, and using diatomaceous earth. I also give them a healthy amount of herbs and kelp with their feed to make sure that they're getting extra vitamins and minerals. My nephew stopped by to give me a hand in the garden, removing invasive plants from my cottage garden and transplanting them on the other side of our home where we've been having problems with erosion. Over time, the slopes on that side of our house have been wasting away due to rain and heavy foot traffic. So we started to have some loss of soil on our slopes here. So we lay down some erosion control blankets made of straw in hopes of restoring the land here because the hills had just become covered with dirt. Grass was no longer there. So we had to plant grass seed, and hopefully this is going to grow back uh, this year. My goal is to have this invasive plant take root and spread over this entire area to keep that from happening. Let's hope that it works. While he was doing that, I was able to turn my focus onto the food forest garden. Every year is different in the garden, and this will be year four. The fruit trees and berry shrubs that I planted within the first two years are growing and finally starting to take shape. New plants are going in as I get inspired and discover new ideas to turn this place into an edible paradise. I can't help but be amazed by the growth of the garden in just a short amount of time. And every time I step foot into it, I feel as though I am transported into another dimension. Every week is something new as it continues to transform. I got my tomatoes in the ground. I am going to be transplanting pretty soon my pepper plants. Uh, As the temperature continues to rise, it's actually quite nice out. Um, It's been really warm out, like getting up to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. 
and the nights have been pretty steadily like in the 50s um, so it's really nice out um, I also added a lot more plants in my stone spiral herb garden as you can see here so it is going to be filling up and um, what I also just saw growing is poison ivy between a couple of the stones so I really have to address that in the garden this year just pull it whenever I see it get it out of there as quickly as possible because you guys know uh, from the past my experience with poison ivy I do not want to get that again this year and I do not want it taking over my garden um, but I have like a few projects lined up that I'm trying to work on um, one of them I think I mentioned to you guys before, which was pulling uh, this invasive plant that was here when we moved in that has just taken over my garden. So you can see this plant is everywhere in my cottage garden. And I've been transplanting that to the other side of the house where the slopes are. Um, hoping that that will help avoid uh, any erosion issues on those slopes going forward. Hi, Bogey. Here's my old dog right here. This is Bogey. He stays behind because he's an old man and doesn't get around very well these days. Um, he's 13 years old and is definitely showing his age. Um, but he loves to just kind of wander around outside, um, especially on these nice cooler mornings. I mean, it's starting to already get pretty warm uh, with the sun out. Um, as you can tell, I'm just in a tank top. It is nice out. Um, so not exactly cool, but later is going to get really, really hot and warm. It's very humid out right now, very muggy. So, um, I'm trying to get out and get my gardening done early. This is just the time of year when you have to start doing that because the temperatures rise very quickly during the day. And I do not like working in extreme heat um, as much as I can. So what I'm going to do is start pulling a lot of this invasive plant uh, as much as I can out of this area. Um, I mean, it serves as a nice ground cover so I don't want to take too much away um, because it has been protecting the soil here. Um, however, I do have other ways to do that. There's just some ideas that I'm, I'm thinking of with this cottage garden that I want to do more of. Um, I think I want to add some height along the back and do that through a variety of different floral plants. Um, but I'm trying to figure out right now what I want to change, what I need to leave behind, what's not working. Um, because when I actually started this garden, I just went ahead and planted seeds everywhere. I didn't really give it too much thought. I did uh, st kind of strategically plant some things, like I planted uh, this chokeberry. Um, and you can see here it is going to start forming its blooms and berries soon enough. And I cannot wait. That's always exciting uh, in the summer season to start harvesting those berries, using those for a lot of different things, medicinal syrups. Um, and I'm excited about that. But I had planted this here. Uh, this is actually an elderberry form of plant. And I, it's, it's not going to produce the berries like my other elderberry does. Uh, this is a different kind of variety that does not produce berries, but it is a, from the elderberry plant. And this is just not doing well here. So I think I might actually even remove it, maybe even transplant it elsewhere. Um, I don't think it likes this spot at all. Um, every year it's just producing less and less leaves and that's not a good sign. So I think I need to take it out and instead I might put something else here in its spot. Um, I wanted to plant a bunch of taller flowers, um, hibiscus, sunflowers, 
hollyhocks, um, uh, just a variety of different high, high producing flowers and along the back here, but it's hard to get back here because right now it's just covered with that invasive plant everywhere. So I need to, I think, just get back there, start removing some things um, and see where that kind of leaves me. Uh, this might be a project that I kind of start tackling this summer um, a little bit by little bit um, and just see what more I can put in here to kind of just bring this garden to life. Um, last year, I planted a bunch of flowers. I did get a lot of height from those flowers and I do have some things that are starting to grow in. So it's really difficult because I don't want it to um, change too much right now because I know that this area is going to be filled with beautiful flowers uh, later in the season. And I, I planted a lot of seeds and so I don't want to change too much. So I'm trying to be mindful here. Uh, especially when pulling this invasive plant. Um, but anyway, I, I'm i actually just taking the time to enjoy being outside right now without Ollie running around, without having to get onto him and, and babysit him um, too much. It is just nice. It's nice at this time of the morning before the heat really starts settling in to get out here and just enjoy the peace and quiet. Uh, especially when the rest of the world is starting to start their day, they're all going to work. Um, and it's just, it's just beautiful. It's a beautiful time to be out. And so I'm just kind of soaking it up. Um, I might even lay out for a little bit today in the sun, uh, just to get some of that mm, natural vitamin D. And I can, I can see here, Bogey's got the right idea. <laughs>
Last week was a rare event in the night sky. Throughout much of the U.S., you could see the northern lights. I have never seen this in my lifetime, and so an event like this makes me pause and think about everything we still don't fully understand about our sense of reality. I mean, even now, as researchers and archaeologists discover more and more about our planet, the cosmic universe, and our connection to it, it begins to make us question everything. Our history, how we really got here, and what it all means. The sun is our source, and our soul is part of it. It's the giver of all life. If the sun doesn't shine, there is no light, there is no life, no consciousness, nothing. It is absolute black darkness. Even the moon gets its light from the sun, the light side being the masculine and the dark side being the feminine. That's why both the dark and light, the yin and yang, have been revered throughout many cultures and still is to this day. Both equally important and mirrored throughout all of nature. Even a seed needs a period of darkness before it can germinate and sprout to begin its ascent toward the light and eventually come into its vibrancy. It's also why I garden according to the moon's phases planting only my below-grounders during the dark phase of the moon and my above-grounders during its light phase. We can feel that within ourselves, too, the light side and the dark side. Without the light, there is no shadow. And it is through the shadow where we can learn more about the conscious parts of ourselves The parts of ourselves that we don't want others to see. The parts that seem forbidden or that we reject or society rejects. There is mystery in the shadow, in the darkness, and the light helps us to see it more clearly. So as more light shines on this part of the world, it's a time to return to Source, the giver of all life and honor our soul, coming into full expression of who we are at the core, full of light and full of love, rising together into a higher state of consciousness, a higher state of being.